Curse Kazaa, the black hole that kills galaxies. Quasars. Quasars, did I say that right? The universe looks like a vast, empty ocean sprinkled with rare islands of Let's galaxies. But this is an illusion. Just a small fraction of all atoms are found in galaxies, while the rest is thought to be drifting in between in the intergalactic medium. Like the roots of some massive tree, gas spreads out from each galaxy, gravity funneling fresh mass into this dense cosmic forest. Here in the intergalactic... Dense cosmic forest. What a f way to explain the galaxy, huh? Dense cosmic... Forest is crazy, bro. Bro, imagine seeing space in real life. Like how crazy that would look. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, bro. Technology getting crazy. We need like a POV of space. Like pinpoint somebody up there giving us the visual. POV type. You know what I'm saying? Like, pfft, man. Funneling fresh mass into this dense there isn't cosmic forest. Yet. Here in the intergalactic medium, are the raw materials of creation. Hydrogen and helium, woven into sheets and filaments that flow into galaxies where they eventually create stars. But if we look closely, we see who's actually in charge. Quasars, the single most powerful objects in existence. Quasars. As small as a grain of sand compared to the Amazon River, they reside in the centers of some galaxies, shining with the power of a trillion stars, blasting out huge jets of matter completely reshaping the cosmos around them. Jeez. They're so powerful that they can kill a galaxy. Damn. What are they, and how do they mold the structure of the universe at their whim? Jeez, bro. Dun, dun, dun. Everywhere you look, weird things in the sky. Yeah, yeah. In the 1950s, Astronomers noticed mysterious loud radio waves coming from spots all over the sky. They were named quasi-stellar radio sources, or quasars, because they were dots like stars, but were seen in radio waves rather than visible light. Everything about them was strange. Some right. flickered, others emitted high-energy x-rays in addition to radio waves, but all seemed to be tiny. They all moved extremely fast, as much as over 30% the speed of light. Oy. The only explanation was that they must have been so distant that their apparent speed was actually the expansion of the universe moving them away from us. But these enormous ah. distances meant that quasars couldn't just be stars, but the active cores of galaxies billions of light years away. And it gets crazier. To appear so bright and loud, Given these vast distances, they are thousands of times brighter than the entire Milky Way. Monsters exploding and screaming into the void with a violence not thought possible. That visual, bro. Monsters exploding and screaming into the void with a violence not thought possible before. As we mapped the sky, we discovered over a million quasars, and they all seemed to be very far away. Looking into space far away means very long ago because li that's a lot for something that can destroy galaxies, bro. Over a million of them, too. Light takes so long to reach us. Quasars were common in the early universe, having peaked in number 10 billion years ago when galaxies and the universe itself were still very young. Let's go back in time just 3 billion years after the Big Bang and see what was going on back then. The incredible power of quasars. How could an early baby galaxy be so incredibly bright and violent? All that light and radiation couldn't be stars, as there weren't nearly enough of them. And since galaxies tend to grow with time by merging, the starlight from small galaxies shouldn't be far brighter than any galaxy today. There's only one way to generate the vast amounts of energy a quasar shines with, feeding supermassive black holes. We still don't know how exactly they formed, but it seems that every galaxy has one in their center. But how can the brightest things in the universe be black holes which trap anything and everything that crosses their event horizon? Yep. Well, the light of a quasar is not coming from inside these black holes. Rather, it comes from the space around them, a massive orbiting disk of gas called an accretion disk. Quasars use the same fuel as stars to shine, matter. It's just that black holes are the most efficient engines for converting matter into... 
I make things glow and I make things glow. <laughs> energy in the universe. And a one ups. The energy Fucking released shit, by bro. matter falling into a black hole can be 60 times greater than that released by nuclear fusion in the core of a star. Because the energy released by a black hole comes from gravity, not from nuclear reactions. Yeah. Matter falling into a black hole. Yo, question. Has he made a video about the B Bermuda Triangle? You know what I'm saying? Speeds up to almost the speed of light before it crosses the event horizon, buzzing with an incredible amount of kinetic energy. Of course, once inside the black hole, it takes that energy with it. Yeah. You only get to witness this energy if you drop your matter in the right way fall straight down and the outside universe gets nothing but when you have a lot of matter it spirals in incredibly fast towards the event horizon forming a disk Jeez. collisions between particles and friction heated up to hundreds of thousands good. of degrees He's in a space not much bigger than our solar system <clears throat> the core of a galaxy can release many times more energy than all its stars combined this is what a quasar is a supermassive black hole having a feast and these black holes eat a lot. Typical quasar. All right, so then it probably went over my head. How come black holes don't get the the no 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 the the quasars? Why doesn't that get up in the in the black hole? You know what I'm saying? Like type shit. You see me? One to a hundred Earth masses of gas per minute. Jeez. Ten billion years ago, the universe was about a third of its current size, so the intergalactic medium was much less spread out, meaning yeah. the filaments of gas around quasars could feed them a banquet, making yeah, yeah, yeah. them vomit insane amounts of light and radiation. The brightest quasars power jets, tangling the magnetic field of the matter around them into a narrow cone. Like a particle accelerator, they launch enormous beams of matter out, plowing through the circumgalactic medium, forming plumes of matter that grow to hundreds of thousands of light years in size. It's almost unfathomable in scale. A tiny spot in a galaxy carving out patches of the universe hundreds of thousands of light years long. But quasars can't eat for long, maybe a few million years, because their feast ultimately kills their galaxy. Yeah. How quasars kill galaxies? Okay, right. maybe killing is a bit of an exaggeration. A galaxy is still there after its quasar turns off, but it will never be the same again. Quasars, being among the hottest and brightest things in the universe, break their galaxies by heating them up too much and stopping star formation. Stars are gas that collapsed in on itself and then got really hot. But in a cloud of gas that's already hot, atoms are moving quickly. When they collide, they hit hard, exerting pressure that resists gravity's squeeze. So hot gas they hit hard hit hard exerting pressure that they hit hard exerting pressure resists that resists gravity squeeze that resists quasi gravity squeeze exerts pressure would it wait that that's not when they collide they hit hard exerting pressure that resists gravity squeeze it's making pressure. It exerts pressure, but it's going against the squeeze of grab. Wait, I feel like it should be the other way around, no? Hey, he he knows no more than me. You know what I'm saying? He knows more than me. So I'm not hot saying he's gas wrong. cannot form stars. Instead, the best gas for forming stars is already cold and won't put up a fight when it's time to collapse into a star. <laughs> On top of that. Quasars push gas out of their galaxies. Not only does this starve the quasar, but its galaxy loses the raw materials for new stars. As uh, sad as this sounds, it might be a good thing for life. Okay. The alternative can be far more dangerous. Too many stars. Yeah, yeah. New stars forming is usually followed by massive stars exploding in supernovae, so planets would be burned sterile. Damn. But of course, Jeez. it's more complicated. Like the intricacies of our own planet's biosphere, every piece of the galaxy is dependent on and influencing every other part of the galactic environment. While hot things like quasars and supernovae tend to push gas out of the galaxy, shockwaves and quasar jets can also compress gas, making new stars at least for a short time. But in general, we can say that without things becoming a bit more chill, we would not exist today. Which brings us to our final question. Did the Milky Way have a quasar in the past? 
It's unclear if every galaxy went through a quasar phase, but understanding distant quasars may provide clues to the history of the Milky Way. Galaxies don't do a good job of preserving their history. Like sand on a beach, the endless churning mixes away the clues to their past. It's possible the Milky Way was once a quasar, which may have allowed our supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star to have grown to 4 million times the mass of the Sun. Daggy. And as dormant as it is now, Sagittarius Daggy. A star could turn into a quasar in the future. In a few billion years, the Milky Way will merge with Andromeda. We've seen over a hundred double quasars in galaxies smashing together, where fresh gas is provided for the central black holes. But it won't last for long. When galaxies merge, so do their supermassive black holes, yeah. sinking into the center of their new galaxy, kicking up dust and stars in every direction. We don't know whether this will happen, but it would truly be an incredible sight. Maybe some beings in the far future are going to witness it and be in awe of what they see. Yeah, no. But you don't have to wait. Yeah, no. Fucking A, bro. Quasars. Bla are black holes that kill galaxies, bro. I fucking love the visuals and thumbnail, bro. Look at this thumbnail. They made it look like a little monster, bro. You feel me? That's just wild. Uh, <clears throat> learning about space feels like the equivalent of gaining awareness of the world around you as a kid. While the animation team did not hold back this, they did not. Shout out to the motion graphics artist. The visuals at 550. You cannot only see the radio loads, but they illustrate how it cars out of void in space universe hundreds of thousands Yo, of light years long it's the details bro the fucking details uh not only some black holes can jet out insane amounts of energy but they also spin incredibly fast and its extreme gravity can bend the space itself around them that's wild nothing truly compares to its power what a unit it's absolutely nuts that most of the universe mass is located between galaxies not inside them you know fucking a bro Quasars. Hey man, that's so much unseen up in space, bro. Especially in the ocean as well. Let me ask y'all this, because this was a question in um one of the videos I reacted to. Would you guys be no no no? It was a post on Facebook, sorry. Would you guys be overly obsessed with doing research in space or the ocean? You know what I'm saying? Let me know. That's my reaction from the drug of this video. Like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'm out.